Hello everybody, my name is Kat Bowser. I'm your resident fantasy therapist and welcome to my channel. Those of you who are here for the first time, my name is Kat Bowser. I'm a licensed therapist and I'm also an author working on my first novel. So on my channel, I like to tackle what I consider to be the heart of writing, which is in the characters. And the heart of the characters is in their psychology. So that's the angle we take with everything we talk about on my channel. So today we are back to our regular schedule with the end of Halloween week. And so that means that we are discussing some more on world building. And today I wanted to tackle world building, specifically customs. So what exactly are customs? Customs are behaviors, activities, things of that nature that a certain group of people do. And the thing about customs is they can be what we call macro or micro. So micro would be like customs within a specific family, a specific family group. Uh, macro would be like customs within a specific people. So um, the thing about any time you do customs is try not to get caught up in what I call the stereotypical. So that's usually where the macro comes in because we all have these ideas about what a certain group of people do and they're usually based on things that we've heard as children like um, if you grow up hearing about well the Scottish drink a lot or the <laughs> or the um, the Chinese eat a lot of rice or you know things like that um, and those aren't necessarily customs but that's the same kind of idea um, but the thing I think to remember though is that we usually get these ideas based off of some truth. I stress the word some because like everything in history, it gets distorted um, depending on how many um, people it passes through. So let's just tackle just customs in general. And I'm going to, I'm not going to go into great detail about all the different types of customs because honestly that would take forever. Um, because there are so many. Uh, typically, when we talk about customs, they can usually be um, traced back to a specific belief. Um, not necessarily religious, but a belief of some sort. So, um, for example, a custom that my family always had is that you would come together the whole extended family came, comes together for Christmas and Easter. Thanksgiving, if you can do it, but definitely Christmas and Easter. Um, and everybody coming together means that there was essentially a big meal. And this is something that I've discussed in some of my other videos that my personal culture is food equals love. So anytime you got the family together, you were eating. Um, you were usually eating by, you're usually eating a meal prepared by essentially the matriarch, which was my grandmother. Um, and that still kind of holds true to this day. Uh, my grandmother has unfortunately passed on, but now my mother has taken over that role. So come Christmas, Easter, Thanksgiving, we all come together and my mother cooks the meal. And I definitely expect once I get older and have children of my own, I will be taking that over as well. So that is one example of a custom. And so where does that belief come from? Well, honestly, for us, it's because I think it comes from the fact that with our culture, you used to have multiple families together. Like you would have multiple generations that lived together. Um, both sides of my family used to own farms, so there were large families. Um, my grandfather, I believe, had, I want to say 13 siblings, I think that's right, and um, I, I think my other grandparents, uh, somebody had like 13 siblings, somebody had like eight, so big families, let's just sum it up like that. So when we come together for the big holidays with the whole extended family, it's trying to recapture that feeling of this large involved family. So that's one custom that we have. Um, 
And the thing I think that is important to think about when you're creating customs for your um, story is that customs change. They shift over time. Um, so let's, oh, here's a good example of it. So one uh, holiday that we did when I was growing up, we didn't do it extensively, but it, it was still there. And that was May Day. So that is May 1st. Um, and the traditional idea was that you would have a maypole. So basically a big pole that children would run around. They would wrap ribbons around. Um, it was also a time where you would present a basket full of flowers, drinks, and maybe some cookies or treats. And you would drop it on the doorstep of someone that you liked. And you would ring the bell and you would run away. <laughs> and the idea was that the person who received the gifts wouldn't then have to go out and try to figure out who left them. Now, the origin of May Day was actually a celebration of the shift from um, winter to spring. That is the origin of May Day. But different societies take it and they do different things with it. They change it around, they shift it, and it becomes more personalized to them. Um, an example I can give you guys from um, one of the cartoons I liked to watch when I was a kid, um, Disney's Gummy Bears. They actually address this in an episode, and I think I always thought it was neat that they address this. So there is a holiday that they celebrate. I believe it's Fall's Farewell, I think is what it's called. Um, so they would spend the day before gathering everything they need for winter, food, wood, making candles, all that stuff. And then their holiday was they got to do nothing. They got to sit around and do absolutely nothing. Well, when one of them decides that they want to invite someone to just hang out on that day and celebrate with them, they feel like they need to do a little more than they usually do. So they go and they look it up. And actually, it used to be a very involved holiday with meals and special clothing and music and all this stuff that has just been lost over time. And... I love the way that they explain it because one of the characters mentions, um, well, it used to be a big deal, but we've gotten kind of lazy about it. And that's how things shift is when people just, they, they start doing things a little differently and it sticks. And then you do them a little more differently. It sticks, it sticks, it sticks, it sticks. So I think that is some really good insight. So when you're creating customs, I, have, I advise you to think about, okay, is this always how it's been or has it, sh has it shifted from what it used to be? Because one, that's going to tell you a lot about how your society has shifted and changed. And two, it's going to tell you um, a lot about their history. It's going to give you a little glimpse into their history without you having to do all this info dumping. So that's always fun. Um, let's see, what's a good example of this? Um, okay, so in my uh, work in progress, the Natuba have a, um, they have a celebration where it's called the coming of the seasons. And it, and it was originally a celebration that happened when the first flower bloomed and they would have a feast that they would originally present to Natur, their um, mother goddess. But over time, it shifted to become a celebration of what nature gives them. So primarily food and children. So it had become essentially their version of Christmas almost because the children would receive presents and candy and gifts and there would be games all dedicated to celebrating children. But that's not what it started as, but it shifted as time went on because their society became devoted to protecting and preserving their children. And they believe through their religion that children are a gift from Natur. So it shifted. And I think that is the biggest thing to remember with customs is they don't all stay the same. Even if you have people who are from the same group, whenever people fracture, fracture off and they go and they form their own groups, that is going to take a different evolution. So, um, good example 
the three, um, yeah, the three tribes I have in my work in progress, the Nat Natusa, Natula, and the Natuba. They are all the same species, but they have broken off over time from the main group and they've all kind of created their own societies. So they don't all believe the same thing. They don't all celebrate the same thing. The same thing isn't important to all of them. Um, and even among the Natusa, they are further fractured because you have the urban Natusa, which is essentially the big cities where there are um, a republic and things like that. And then you have the rural, who are individual villages. And the balance of power and everything is completely different depending on where you're at. So they all have different customs. So um, good example, when uh, Suna goes to visit the Natuba the first time, she was raised that she does not question unless she is asked. Because growing up, unfortunately, that's what she grew up under. The Natuba, on the other hand, have this idea that you ask to learn. So you ask all the freaking time. And that's an adjustment she's going to have to make or figure out what she's going to do. And I think it's important with customs to remember that they're not always they're not always rooted in religion either. Sometimes they're they're rooted in like superstitions or myths or things like that which may be related to religion, but it may not be related to religion. So if you have a group of people, for example, who don't believe in anything, they're just purely science-based, um, that doesn't mean they don't have customs. They're going to have customs, things that they do every day because of how their life is run. Um, like the uh, drag green in my work in progress they believe in universalism, which is essentially the universe creates the gods, not vice versa. Um, so there is a lot of emphasis on science in their culture. But they still have a custom of everybody has the same birthday because they live underground. So they don't see the sun. They don't see the moon. So how they measure time is when these bioluminescent creatures show up. And they show up essentially once a year. And so that's how they measure time. So their custom is you don't celebrate someone's birthday till these bioluminescent creatures come up. And when that happens, the whole city shuts down. One day celebration, that's, that's how they do it. That's one of their customs. Um, so lots of things influence custom. Religion, geography, family structure, moral beliefs, all those kind of things. So these are all gonna influence structure, our customs. See, I'm not completely awake, apparently. Uh, so, like I said, I'm not going to sit here and run through dozens of customs for you guys. But I will say, like I said, keep in mind the history of it. Keep in mind where it branches from and why certain people vary. Because even within a culture, you're going to have people that vary. Um, like even within um, the culture of the South, which is where I'm from, you're going to have so much variation. Um, sometimes when people gather together to have a meal, it's expected everybody brings something and contributes. Whereas, like I said, when I grew up, it was um, the belief that the, the matriarch would prepare everything for everyone. So those are just an example of small little differences that you're going to find. So customs can be fun. Um, I do advise you not to get too caught up in them, though, because that is one of those falling down the wormhole with world building. So I would look at what are some customs that my characters are definitely going to come across. Like, throughout the course of the story, what makes sense for them to come across? Um, so, like in my first book, um, some of these customs that I'm talking about may or may not be mentioned. They may not be mentioned to the second or the third book. Um, they may not be mentioned at all, and I'm, I'm just um, keeping them in mind for myself. 
So just, just some things to keep in mind and to consider when you're making customs. Definitely have fun with it though, because I think this is one of the, um, this is definitely one of the more creative aspects of world building. I really enjoy doing it. So thank you guys. That is just a little video on customs world building for you guys. As always, if you guys have suggestions or comments, leave them below. I will always be happy to look at them and respond. And until next time, I hope you guys have a good one. If you enjoy this content, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a video when I upload. You will see another video for me on Thursday and um, another one on Sunday. And hopefully some extra ones in between. We'll see how it goes. So until then, take care.